Let's learn about inverse transform sampling. What we're going to learn is how to generate random numbers following any probability distribution. And what tools do we have at our disposal? So creating a true random number generator from scratch is beyond the scope of this video. We will assume that we already have the ability to generate random numbers from a uniform distribution on the interval from 0 to 1. And how can we translate the numbers from 0 to 1 to other types of random numbers? So let's start with a simple example. How could we translate random numbers in the interval 0, 1 into coin flips? Well, when we generate a number between 0 and 0 0.5, we could call that tails, and when we generate a number between 0 0.5 and 1, that would be heads. And this means that we will generate half tails and half heads. So we just created a coin flip simulator from a uniform distribution simulator. Here's an example involving height. Suppose that we have a table of heights and their percentiles. 10% of people are between 58.1 and 61 inches. Now, when we generate a number between 0 and 0 0.1, which happens 10% of the time, we will draw a random person between 58.1 and 61 inches tall. This means that these heights will have approximately equal representation in our sample and in the population, 10%. Similarly, 10% of people are between 61 and 62.6 inches tall. Whenever we generate a number between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, we will sample a person in this height range. Thus, each height range will be represented in proportion to how often they actually occur. How do we know exactly what height to make the person, though? Well, we can make the table even more detailed. We could include every fifth percentile instead of only every tenth. Then, when we generate a number between 0 and 0 0.05, we could generate a number between the 0 and 5th percentile, between 58.1 and 59.4. Or we could include every single percentile. Really, we could make this table as detailed as we want it to be. We can make a table so detailed that if I asked you what the 94.34728394729 percentile is, it would tell me exactly the corresponding height. Now, that table would be really long. But we can often store the whole table in a mathematical function instead. This function must create a correspondence between heights and their percentiles. And the function that relates values of a variable to percentiles is called the cumulative distribution function, or the CDF. In a CDF, you put in a number of interest, like height, and it spits out the percentile. So we put in a value of a variable, and it tells us the percentile. Similarly, we have an inverse function that does the opposite. We put in a percentile, and it returns the corresponding height. And programming languages like R have the inverse CDF functions included. These are the Q functions, and Python has them in scipy.stats. They are the PPF functions, and even Excel has functions like norm inverse and T inverse. All percentiles are equally likely to occur. So 1% of things are between the 0 percentile and the 1st percentile. 1% 1 of things are between the 50th percentile and the 51st percentile. So something is equally likely to be at exactly the 0.2 percentile as it is to be at the 50th percentile. All percentiles are equally likely to occur. And this means that percentiles always follow a uniform distribution. The distribution of the percentile for any variable follows a uniform distribution. So since the percentiles always have a uniform distribution, if we can randomly generate the percentiles from a uniform distribution, then all we have to do is translate those percentiles into the actual values, and we have a random sample from the variable of interest. And we do this translation by plugging the 0 to 1 values into the inverse CDF, which we will denote as F inverse. Okay, so we can generate numbers from this uniform distribution. We plug them into the inverse CDF function, and the values that will be spit out will be transformed into the distribution of the actual variable of height, which might look like this, something like a normal distribution. So let's do an easy example of this as a sanity check. The inverse CDF for a uniform distribution itself on the interval 0 to 1 is f inverse of x is equal to x. Okay, so it's the identity function. We put in a number, and it spits out the same number. So let's generate numbers from a uniform 0, 1 distribution, which looks like this. And then we will transform these numbers by plugging them into the inverse CDF. Well, it's not really transforming them. It's keeping the number the same. Thus, we are generating uniform random variables, and after plugging them into the inverse CDF, they remain the same. And so these random samples are also from a uniform distribution.
So this is one piece of evidence that this method works. Now let's try this for a non-trivial problem simulating from an exponential distribution. So this is an exponential distribution. We have its probability density function, its cumulative distribution function, and its inverse CDF. And this is what an exponential distribution looks like. Here, I generated random samples from the exponential distribution using the R function REXP, which generates random exponential variables. However, we could also use the method we're learning, inverse transform sampling, and generate random observations from a uniform distribution, which will look like this. So these uniform distribution samples, if we looked at the data, look like this. These are random percentiles between 0 and 1. Then, using our method, we simply want to translate the percentiles to actual values of the exponential variable. And we do this by plugging these percentile values into the inverse CDF. Okay, so I take the percentile and I plug it into the inverse CDF and we see that we get 1.404415. Similarly, I plug in the other values into the inverse CDF, the negative natural log of 1 minus x. And we do this for each value. Now we can graph these values instead. And look at them. They look like an exponential distribution. This looks exactly like when we generated the exponential distribution directly. So when we plug the uniform variables into the inverse CDF function, they now have an exponential distribution. So wrapping up, we can generate random numbers from any distribution as long as we have a random number generator that generates uniform 0, 1 random variables and the inverse CDF of the distribution we want to simulate from. What we are doing is we are randomly generating the percentiles, which always follow a uniform distribution, and then we are translating the percentiles to the actual values. That's the end. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.